Hawaii Volcanoes National Park is one of my favorite parks. If you haven't been there before, it's a definite must visit. And if you have been there before, well, I think you'll agree with me, you need to go back again. In today's video, I'm going to talk about my top 10 favorite things to see and do at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. I have been to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park countless times, and these particular 10 things I'm going to talk about today are things that I've found myself going back to over and over again. Now obviously, the biggest attraction at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park is the Kilauea Volcano. If the Kilauea Volcano is not erupting, there's a lot of other things to see and do in the park as well. And even if it is erupting, I also encourage you to check these things out. Now before we talk about my top 10 favorite things to see and do, let me talk about a few things you'll want to make sure you do before you enter Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. First thing you want to do is make sure your vehicle is fueled up. There are no gas stations within Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, but there are a few in the nearby town of Volcano. You'll definitely want to fuel up before entering the park as there is quite a bit of driving if you do decide to go all the way down the Chain of Craters Road. Also, you'll want to make sure you bring plenty of food and water. There are limited concessions within Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. If you're gonna spend the whole day there, you'll definitely want to bring enough to eat and drink. In addition, you'll wanna make sure you bring plenty of sunscreen, and you'll also want to have good footwear in case you decide to do any of the many hikes within Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. All right, let's get started on my top 10 things to see and do in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. First thing you'll want to do is you'll want to stop by the Visitor Center. The Visitor Center is straight ahead once you've paid to enter the park. At the Visitor Center, you'll be able to pick up a map of the park, and you'll also be able to see several displays there that talk about some of the history of the park and some of the more famous eruptions. In addition, the rangers here do give guided tours at certain times of the day. If you haven't done one of the tours before, I definitely encourage you to do it at least once. I'm not the kind of guy who likes to do a lot of tours. I'm kind of a explorer on my own type of person, but I did learn a lot on the tour and learning about some of the eruptions and history of that park definitely made me appreciate a lot of the things I saw and did there. So definitely do it once if you haven't already. Now, in addition, a lot of the items on display at the Visitor Center used to be on display at the Jagger Museum. Now, if you've been to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park prior to the 2018 eruption, you probably visited the Jagger Museum. This used to be a great place to watch Kilauea erupting. But the 2018 eruption had so many earthquakes that the Jagger Museum actually had cracks develop in it and the ground around it became very unstable. So Jagger Museum has unfortunately been shut down and it's not known if it's ever gonna reopen, which is kind of a bummer because I have a lot of great memories uh, sitting there at nighttime watching Kilauea erupt. It was a great vantage point. Once you've checked out the visitor center, the next thing you'll wanna check out is the Crater Rim Trail. The Crater Rim Trail is a must see whether Kilauea is erupting or not. As you might guess based on the name, this trail does go around the rim of the crater. Now you cannot go all the way around the crater, but you can go most of the way around at this point. This trail follows along the very edge of the Kilauea caldera and provides some excellent views of that crater. The views used to be great before the summit eruption of 2018, but I think the views are even better now, now that that crater became much larger and deeper. My favorite place to park to check this out is at the Steam Vent parking lot. The Steam Vent parking area is a little bit beyond the visitor center, if you follow straight on Crater Rim Drive, and it's a fairly sizable lot. I've usually been able to find plenty of parking there anytime I'm there. Once you start hiking the Crater Rim Trail, you'll quickly discover the sheer size and vastness of this crater. The footage I'm showing you here really cannot do this justice. You really have to see it for yourself if you haven't. It is incredible. Now, I generally recommend doing a mile or two on the Crater Rim Trail. It really gives you an appreciation for the different vantage points of Kilauea. And a lot of the trail is quite pleasant. Uh, much of it goes through some woods and you'll often see a lot of birds and unique plants along the trail as well. Destination number three I recommend checking out are the steam vents and the sulfur banks. If you park at the steam vent parking area, you'll be able to see where the steam vents are. They will be directly across the road in a large field. And there's actually also some right there at that parking area behind a metal railing. The sulfur banks are a little bit beyond the steam vents. If you cross the road and keep walking, you'll get back to those. And those are pretty neat to check out as well. This is a place where a lot of volcanic gases and steam from groundwater come up to the surface. Some of the time this area is full of mist and steam. Other times there's only a little bit coming out of the ground. 
but as of late, there's been plenty to see there. But please do note that these gases are often rich in carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide. So if you do have respiratory problems, heart problems, or young children with you, it's recommended that you do not walk all the way back to the steam vents or the sulfur banks. The great news though is even if you don't want to walk to them, you have a great view of them from the steam vent parking area. Oftentimes I'll just go there and watch the steam vents for a couple hours. Now once you've checked out the Crater Rim Trail and the steam vents, it's time to hit the Chain of Craters Road. The Chain of Craters Road is number four on my list, and that leads to a lot of these other destinations I'm going to mention. I consider the Chain of Craters Road a must drive in the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. I have driven this road countless times and I never get tired of it. There's a lot to see along that road, and it looks different during different times of the year and different times of the day. As you may have guessed by the name, this 19 mile road does feature several craters along the drive. Each one is neat to get out and check out. Most of the craters are right along the side of the road, so if you park in those small parking lots, it's usually a very quick walk to check them out. Uh, even if you wanna get out for five or 10 minutes and get back in the car and keep going, I recommend seeing each one. Each one is different and unique. In addition, along this drive, you'll also see places where some of the lava flows cross the road and they had to rebuild the road or reroute it. Uh, one of the more famous ones is the 1974 flow from Mauna Ulu and that erupted copious amounts of lava. Much of Chain of Craters Road was covered in that area during that time and had to be rebuilt. The Chain of Craters Road does begin just beyond the entrance to the park and it winds all the way down to the very bottom by the Pacific Ocean. This road is an out and back road. There is no official exit on the other side. Therefore, however far you drive down, you will have to drive back up again. Not far down the Chain of Craters Road, you will come to destination number five, which is the Thurston Lava Tube. Now this lava tube has been closed most of the time since 2018 eruption. So it is important to note that this may not be open when you visit the park. However, I'm hopeful when you do visit the park that this will be open again. This lava tube was formed about 500 years ago and is a cave-like structure where a river of lava once flowed through it. The Hawaii Volcanoes National Park staff have installed lights in here and it's a relatively easy walk through the tube. It's a short hike through and then you loop back around and come back up some steps back to where you parked. Please do note, this is a very popular destination at the park and there's often very little parking here. So if there is no parking available, I recommend parking at the Kilauea Iki parking area, which is just up the road from the lava tube. Speaking of the Kilauea Iki crater, number six on my list is the Kilauea Iki hike. This hike is one of my favorites in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. It's a moderate four mile hike and you start off in the Kilauea Iki parking lot and you descend down through a jungle forest to the very base of the Kilauea Iki crater. This crater was formed from the 1959 eruption of Kilauea Iki, and at one time it was a lava lake until it collapsed and the lava drained out the bottom. This eruption in 1959 lasted for about a month during the months of November and December. But while it did last, the lava was shot very high into the air. Some of the lava fountains reached 1900 feet in height. Very incredible. The base of the crater is about two miles long, and once you've crossed the crater, you then climb up the steps on the other side and you loop back around the top of the crater, back to where you parked. The hardest part of this hike is getting down to the base of the crater and then back out. The base of the crater is relatively level and it's pretty neat down through here. There's a lot of steam coming up from some of the vents and I've often seen rainbows at the base of the crater, which makes for a really scenic view as you hike along. Number seven on my list is at the very bottom of the Chain of Craters Road, and it is the Hole Sea Arch. Now, of course, along your drive down the Chain of Craters Road, there is a lot of craters to check out. So as I mentioned, I definitely recommend checking those out. And there's also a great overlook as you get down closer to the ocean. It'll be on the right-hand side and there's ample parking. And there's also a wooden observation deck at that overlook. I definitely recommend stopping there on your way down. The views are phenomenal from there. Now, once you do get to the very end of Chain of Craters Road, you will see parking on both sides, quite a bit of parking. And then straight ahead of you, there will be an observation deck along the sea cliffs and you will look back from the way you came and there along the cliff you will see the sea arch. This sea arch was formed due to differential erosion where some of the harder layers of lava stayed behind and the weaker layers fell out into the ocean. 
The sea arch did get cracked during the 2018 eruption and earthquakes, but as of today, it's still standing there. Prior to 2018, you used to be able to stand much closer to the sea arch to observe it, but the ground along those sea cliffs became relatively unstable and developed a lot of cracks. So the observation area has been moved back about a thousand feet from the sea arch. But it's still great views and I recommend checking it out. Once you've checked out the sea arch, it's time to head back up Chain of Craters Road. Not too far along your way back, you will see a parking area for the Pu'uloa petroglyphs. Along this 1.5 mile hike, you'll see lots of petroglyphs. These petroglyphs are an incredible collection of images that document the life and culture of the native Hawaiian people. This is a definite must visit, and it's truly incredible to walk along there and see these. Number nine on my list is a challenging hike, but it is right across the road from the Pu'uloa petroglyphs. This is known as the Puna Coast Trail. Now initially you may think, why is this challenging? You know, it's level, it's right along the coastal plain. Well, the reason it's so challenging is because you were in the wide open on the black lava fields and there is no shade. And when the sun hits off those, the amount of heat you'll experience is hard to describe. The Puna Coast Trail does go for many, many miles along the lava plains with the Pacific Ocean on your left. After hiking several miles, you will end up really close to the sea cliffs and you'll reach a spot where the waves crash up over the cliffs, which is one of my favorite spots. This trail is definitely off the beaten path and I rarely, if ever, see anybody else on this trail. But one of my personal rules for this trail is I don't ever hike it between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. just due to the intensity of the heat. So if I'm visiting the park to hike this trail, I do get down there first thing in the morning. And by first thing in the morning, I do mean around 6.30 or 7 at latest. That gives me about four hours of solid hiking time. And then what I'll do is I'll hike about two hours out and two hours back. If you do decide to do this hike, you'll definitely want good hiking shoes, plenty of sunscreen, and plenty of food, and especially plenty of water. I find myself drinking every 10 minutes along this hike. And no, I'm not exaggerating. Every 10 minutes, even if it's not during the hours of 11 to three. That's how intense the heat and the sun is here. You definitely do not want to underestimate this hike. It is a tough one. But if you don't want to do this entire hike, or if you just like to do a short section of the trail, I definitely recommend checking it out, even if you want to do a quarter mile or a half mile. It's neat to hike along this lava, and there's a lot of different types of lava to see as you hike along. Just make sure you follow the ahu, otherwise known as cairns, otherwise known as stacks of rocks. You'll definitely want to follow those as those lead the way. This is a place where you don't want to get off the trail because there are some cracks and deeper fissures in the lava. So you definitely want to stay on the trail here. Once you've gotten back to your car, it's time to head back up the Chain of Craters Road the rest of the way. Once you get back up to the top, there is a final destination I recommend checking out. And this is the Waldron Ledge Trail. This trail is right across from the visitor center behind the Volcano House. Now this trail is also known locally as the Earthquake Trail. And there's a good reason for that. There used to be a road around the Kilauea Crater here, but during a 1983 earthquake, that road was utterly destroyed. Large chunks of the road crumbled away and some fell down into the crater. This trail does follow right along the edge of the crater and there are lots of sections of the road still left there. In fact, you can see some of the lines still painted on the road. Seeing that gives you a true appreciation for how destructive that earthquake was. This is an easy one mile hike and I often like to do it later in the afternoon. There are nice views of the sun in the western sky across the crater from you. And oftentimes if there's a little bit of rain in the air, you'll see a rainbow here sometimes right over top of the crater. It looks pretty neat. This trail definitely provides stunning views of the Kilauea caldera, and I definitely recommend doing this. So whether you're visiting Hawaii Volcanoes National Park for the first time or the hundredth time, I definitely recommend checking out these 10 things. I find myself coming back to several of these places over and over again. And Hawaii Volcanoes National Park truly is one of the most beautiful places on earth. It's a definite must visit and it also offers an ever-changing landscape due to the active volcanoes. I filmed this video in August of 2021, and I expect Kilauea will be erupting very soon again. The signs are definitely there. If you found this video to be useful or enjoyed the content, please hit the like button. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe and bell notification button, and you'll be notified every time I publish a new video.